Is this plate really safe to use? Well, it depends. If somebody who has the flu just ate off it, it depends on how well it's cleaned. Hi, clean freaks, germaphobes, and everyone in between. Today, we're gonna to talk about the five critical steps you need to do to eliminate the flu from your dishes. Even if you don't develop symptoms or get sick, you can pass it on to someone else. Proper kitchen cleanliness and dish sanitation are important to prevent the spread of harmful bacteria and viruses. When someone is sick with a contagious illness, take extra precautions so no one else gets sick. It's important to avoid sharing dishes with someone who's sick, and that includes their drinking glasses, cups, serving utensils, and civilware. They should have their own set. The flu virus can live on solid surfaces for up to 48 hours. So in this video, we're gonna talk about researched ways to clean and sanitize dishes. Whether you have a dishwasher or wash by hand. There are things that you probably don't think about that you should take seriously, but are extra important when someone is sick. So here are some basic guidelines. Wash your hands. Always wash your hands, especially before touching or preparing food. After cleaning the places where you prepared food, like countertops, wash your hands even after you wash the dishes. And wash your hands before emptying the dishwasher. Or wear gloves. The last thing you want to do is recontaminate the dishes after you've just cleaned them. You always want to clean your dishes right away. Not doing the dishes is a common way to spray germs around the house. Putting dishes in the sink to do later just increases the breeding ground for bacteria. And this isn't just a job for a mom either. Train your whole family, they're old enough to properly do their own dishes and clean them so as soon as they're finished eating and then wash their hands. It's a good life habit to have and it will help keep everyone healthy. I'm married to a man who is very Obsessive, uptight about. Compulsive? Yeah. It's cake, Steven. He almost like hovers over you and as soon as you're done with your dish, he like immediately rinses it and puts it in the dishwasher. It's actually a really nice quality that he has. <laughs> Wish my yes. husband had a little bit more of that. And we've also trained our daughter who does not as well, but she'll at least hand us the dish. How do you clean your dishes? Ideally with a dishwasher. And if possible, with one that has a sterilizing cycle. Plus, when dishes are in the dishwasher, they're actually contained so that they won't spread bacteria and germs around the kitchen. And even if you have a dishwasher, there are certain steps that you need to take to avoid contamination. Start with pre-wash. Whether you're washing the dishes by hand or with a dishwasher, don't skip this step. Scrape off any food particles or anything remaining on your plates, glasses, or utensils. For years, I resented that my husband made us rinse off the dishes before, you put them in, before we put them in the dishwasher because I had read all these studies that said you didn't need to, the dishwasher could get it clean. And that is until I found out what happened to Diana. Recently, our dishwasher went on the fritz. So my husband pulled it apart and he pulled out this grinder thing at the bottom and it was completely clogged with food particles and it was so nasty. So my husband was more like you. He was all about, you don't need to rinse it, that's what the dishwasher's for. And that turned him into a believer about rinsing it before you put it in the dishwasher. Be sure to pay special attention to your forks and knives because they have more hard to reach surfaces like the prongs and the grooves where food can get stuck. Also, if you don't wanna do dishes, you can use paper plates and plastic utensils. That way you can just throw it away after, the, after use. Method two, wash by hand. So I would normally use the dishwashing method, but as I alluded to earlier, my dishwasher dishwasher um, is no longer working. It's in a truck on the way to the dump as we speak and my new dishwasher is not going to come here till Tuesday. I'm dying. So I actually am using the hand washing technique. Step two is to wash the dishes. You want to use hot water and dish detergent. I like Dawn or Ultra Dawn and some sort of scrub or brush. You want to make the water hot enough so that you need gloves and don't burn yourself. It should be the temperature range between 95 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If the, water if the water temperature drops, so it's no longer hot, or if it gets really dirty, drain it and replace it with clean water. Step three, rinse your dishes. You need to use the hottest water for this step. Rinse until there's no detergent left on the dish. Now we're gonna move on to the disinfecting step. One option is to use chlorine bleach. What you wanna do is soak your dishes for at least one minute in a sanitizing solution made up of one tablespoon of chlorine bleach for one gallon of water. Use gloves or utensils to remove the dishes from the solution. Now restaurants often take it a step further with sanitizing solution. You can buy sanitizing tablets like these to use at home. If you're in a pickle though and you don't have bleach and you don't have that sanitizing solution, you can use the hot water method. Soak your dishes completely covered in, a in hot water with a temperature of 170 degrees or higher for at least 30 seconds. Now that hot of water is gonna burn you. So you have to be really, really careful. You can use gloves or utensils to, rem to remove the dishes from the hot water. Step five is to dry the dishes. You probably don't think that much about drying your dishes, 
right? But it does matter. How you dry your dishes plays an important role in kitchen sanitation. Let dishes dry completely before putting them away. They shouldn't be in a sink full of water or even a puddle of water. From least effective to most effective, drying processes can be ranked. The least effective is drying with a dish towel. It's usually the dirtiest thing in your kitchen other than a sponge. You can buy new sponges or towels pretty cheap or wash them after each use. But just keep one for just drying and change it out often. Use a drying rack. They'll get the dishes off the counter and allow, allow for proper airflow, but do not use a dish mat. They can trap heat and moisture and encourage the growth of bacteria and mold. And then drying with a paper towel, air drying, or drying in the dishwasher. If your dishwasher has a sterilizing cycle, use that. So the best way to keep dishcloths clean other than replacing them regularly is microwave it. According to a study published in the Journal of Environmental Health, sponges and scrubbing pads were soaked in water containing a dangerous mix of bacteria. That's really gross. The results showed that just two minutes in the microwave at full power either killed or inactivated more than 99% of all of the living germs and the bacteria spores in the sponges, including E. coli. Now for some quick facts about the difference between cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing. I don't know about you, but I always get these totally mixed up in my head. So many people think that if something looks clean, it's actually safe. Mm -mm. But a kitchen can look completely clean, but still have a lot of bacteria, germs, and viruses. Cleaning and disinfecting are two different things. So cleaning, it actually physically removes grease, the food, residue, dirt, as well as a large number of bacteria, but it also can spread bacteria around too. Mm -hmm. Don't talk and you get a counter or you get a washcloth and you put water on it and then you wipe the counter. I mean, that's mechanical removal, which means it is wiping off some of the bacteria and germs, but it's not killing it. Disinfectants and sanitizers can come in lots of different forms, like liquids, sprays, or wipes. We often confuse the difference between sanitizing, disinfecting, and sterilizing. Sanitation is more of a general term that refers to reducing the overall microbes on a surface, and that can help reduce the chances of getting sick. Disinfecting is stronger. You usually have to leave the disinfectant on a surface for a given amount of time for it to be effective. So like for bleach, each, it's up to 30 seconds but for other household cleaners it can be up to three to four minutes yeah and usually these disinfectants are marked on the package with reduces germs by 99.9 percent .9%. the microscopic organisms claimed on the label of a particular product product so bleach force and force of nature for example says they substantially reduce the number of microorganisms usually by 99.9 percent .9%. you know there's a food pyramid right mm -hmm. well there's something that i call the cleaning pyramid too for the cleaning pyramid most of us will just use the bottom which is clean and the middle, which is sanitized. But when it comes to more serious illnesses that are contagious, you want the top of the pyramid, which is to disinfect. We want to make this information straightforward and practical so you can use it in your own home. We're doing this too. Shortly after making this video, I immediately sanitized my sink. Thank you everybody for watching. Remember, if you liked what you saw today, remember to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be notified of our future videos. Don't forget to share and pin the video so your friends can see it and enjoy it too. We always appreciate people sharing our videos. So we're actually doing a series all about cleaning and sanitation. We have another video about how to clean and sanitize your toothbrush. We'll put a link to that video, click on that, and we'll see you in the next video. Here's my dishwasher right here. It's getting ready to go through the system. Oh, excuse me. So sad. Get back, lady.